until we are gripped with joyful impulses of the gospel, joyful inner impulses of the gospel of grace from the inside, until we're gripped by that, we're always thinking in terms of doing external duties with pressures from outside. So here's the list of stuff to do. God will be pleased if we do it. And now we're going to work up the willpower to do it. That's just a religion. That's religion. That's morality. Christian hedonism, C.S. Lewis at this point, is massively penetrating and insightful. Listen to these two quotes. One of them I, I had never seen before. Somebody mailed it to me. I should give them credit. David may be able to remember who sent it to me. I think it might be Tony Reineke. Okay. Uh, thank you, Tony, wherever you are, for sending me this oh hell quote. <laughs> a, th- this is not it. I'll tell you when I get there. A perfect man would never act from a sense of duty. He'd always want the right thing more than the wrong one. Duty is only a substitute for love of God or of other people, like a crutch, which is a substitute for a leg. Most of us need the crutch at times, but of course, it's idiotic to use the crutch when our legs, our own loves and tastes and habits can do the journey on their own. A perfect man would never act from duty. Now, the pursuit of holiness, therefore, is transformed. My teaching on sanctification. Some of you brothers, I was talking with one of you about this, come from traditions in which this, what I'm saying right now, is just totally, totally, utterly (laughs) unknown. Unknown. Everything is lists. Conformity to external pressures in the church. Dress a certain way, talk a certain way. Do stuff. And and he's saying, no good man acts that way. (laughs) You say, what do we do? We build a whole church around that. Now, here's the really profound thing. This next quote, this is the one from the Oxford History of English Literature. And it's about the Reformation. It's about Puritans. And it's about William Tyndale in particular. What was William Tyndale about? What were the Protestant reformers about? Listen to this. This is good. In reality, Tyndale is trying to express an obstinate fact which meets us long before we venture into the realm of theology. The fact that morality or duty, what he calls the law, never yet made a man happy in himself or dear to others. It is shocking but it is undeniable. We do not wish either to be or to live among people who are clean or honest or kind as a matter of duty. We want to be and associate with people who like being clean and honest and kind. The mere suspicion that what seemed an act of spontaneous friendliness or generosity was really done as a duty subtly poisons it. In philosophical language, the ethical category is self-destructive. Morality is healthy only when it is trying to abolish itself. Christ is the end of the law. I added that. Back to Lewis. In theological language, no man can be saved by works. The whole purpose of the gospel for Tyndale is to deliver us from morality. Thus, paradoxically, the Puritan of modern imagination, the cold, gloomy heart doing as duty what happier and richer souls do without thinking of it, is precisely the enemy which historical Protestantism arose and smote. That's powerful. That's powerful. And I just want to keep smiting. That's what Christian hedonism is. It's the smite. On morality. It's the smite 
on religion. It's the smite on externality and performance and stuff, laws and lists that don't come from in here, that have never tasted the joy, that have never embraced the absolute rock-solid heart enlivening truth. We're at war. That's what Christianity is in my judgment. 